Hello and welcome. My name is Meeples, they, he, she. And today we are looking at and talking about Radiant Black, Volumes 1, 2, 3 by writer Kyle Higgins, artist Marcelo Costa, and letterer Becca Carey, among many others that switched out between volumes. More on them in a moment. This series, Rated Teen Plus, started being published by Image as single issues in February 2021, and the first trade was published in August 2021. Content notes for Police and Hit by a Train. Look a bit more closely at the creative team, but still keeping things short and sweet, we have writer Kyle Higgins, an American comic book writer and film director who is known for many superhero comics and Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Marcela Costa is an artist and colorist from Brazil. He also did color Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Co-writer Cherish Chen, Chapter 6, is a Chinese-American who lives in LA who also worked on Rocket Jump Film School. Co-writer Joe Clark, Chapters 11 and 16 to 17, is based out of Chicago and is also an award-winning composer and trumpeter. Co-writer Alex Siegel, Chapter 15, is based out of LA and has also worked on Marvel and DC Comics, plus Hadrian's Wall. Co-writer Lawrence Holmes, Chapter 18, is a Chicago-area sports reporter who is also a Star Trek fan? Co-writer Megan Camarina, Chapter 12, is a Californian YouTube personality, television host, actress, and comic book writer. Guest artist Eduardo Ferragato, Chapters 5, 9, 14 to 15, and 18 is from Brazil, who is also known for and is also known for Opala 76 and The Last Phantom. Guest artist David Lafuenta, Chapter 6, is a Spanish born comic book creator, also known for illustrating Neil Gaiman's The Graveyard Book. Guest artist French Carl Lomagno, Chapter 12, is also the co creator of Aqualung for Bao Publishing. Colorist Raul Angulo, Chapter 12, is based out of Costa Rica and has also worked on Buffy and Power Ranger comics. Colorist Igor Monti, Chapters 14 to 15, is an Italian artist who has also done work on Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and Mega Man fully charged. Colorist Triona Farrell, chapter 16 to 17, is from Dublin and has worked for Dark Horse, Image, and Marvel. Guest colorist Natalia Marquis, chapters 5, 7, and 8, is from Brazil and was inspired by a workshop by Marcelo Maiolo to become a colorist. Guest artist Matteo Lacono, chapters 11 and 12, of Italy, who has also done covers for Electra, X-Force, and Amazing Spider-Man, Full Circle, among others. Guest colorist Miquel Muerto, chapter 6, is, quote, surviving in Barcelona, apparently used to do zines once upon a time and does colors for Boom, Vault, DC, and IDW. Color assistant Rod Fernandez, chapter 4, is from Brazil and has also done some work on Doctor Who comics. And color assistant Sabrina Del Grosso, chapters 10 and 14 to 15, is another Italian freelancer who has done work for Mega Man, Power Rangers, Heavy Metal, and Exciting Comics. Circling back to people credited on the cover, we have Lebrer Becca Carey, who has also worked on Redlands, Vampirella, Red Sonia, and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And finally, we conclude the section with guest letterer Diego Sanchez, Chapter 12, who is a Brazilian illustrator who has created quad comics and a webcomic entitled Ana Saito, Journalist Fighter. What kind of keywords came up while I read these volumes? Color Coordinated Team, Secret Identity, Alien Tech, and Super Abilities. Flipping over the book, the summary is, quote, Nathan Burnett has just turned 30 and things aren't great. He's working and failing at two jobs. His credit card debt is piling up and his only move is moving back with his parents. But when Nathan discovers and unlocks ethereal cosmic radiant, he's given the power to radically change his fortunes. There's just one problem. The powers don't belong to him and the cosmic beings who created them want them back by any means necessary. End quote. Moving along to my personal opinions of things, I guess I would start with the warning that this really just slid off my brain. I think I must be more of a character arc person because I wasn't at all surprised that this very action-heavy comic didn't connect with me in the least. Well, it's not like there isn't any character parts, but I also had trouble keeping up with all the new characters as they arrived. This is certainly not to say it is bad or anything. This is a very much a Power Rangers-inspired premise, and I was never allowed to watch them growing up. In fact, the very first time I remember lying, I was a very tiny child who had watched some. 
at another person's house and then lied about it when pressed by a parent later. The art and everything visual felt fairly on point with the big two as far as quality went. Not that superheroes, for all their winning qualities, are always the pinnacle of artistic achievement. Although to give full context for any new viewers, I do read and enjoy superhero comics and do not think they are simply the worst. And while I certainly was proven correct to not pick this up otherwise, I am glad the realm of comics has me picking up books outside of my usual tract. Pretty diverse on most counts of race, gender, binary wise anyway, sexuality, and some class. As far as ability and disability goes, I can't dig super into it because, as I said, I had a hard time paying attention to what I was reading, but people did suffer injury, which is more than a lot of superhero comics, and one character ends up in a coma, I think. By all, keep reading and organize to end capitalist oppression. And as always, literally graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional landholders which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.